Yes, good evening, board members and community and, and Southwest ISD staff, and welcome to this fine third week of the 2017-18 school year. I would like to uh, ask Ms. Janice Hernandez to please lead us in our invocation, and then followed by our Pledge of Allegiances. Dear Lord, we ask that you guide us in the work that we embark on tonight and that you help us fulfill our duties to the best of our abilities, always in the interest of our students and the community we serve. Guide our students in all of their future endeavors and provide them with the wisdom they need to make decisions that lead them to opportunities to improve their world. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, one, and individual. Thank you, Mr. Hernandez. <coughs> yes. <laughs> yes, sir, we, uh, staying uh, with what we started in previous years, we do uh, have some really great students to recognize uh, this evening uh, at our elementary and our middle school and our high school. And so, again, I'd like to turn it over to Ms. Hernandez so that we can get to meet some of our greatest students here in our school district. Great. Okay. So we are going to start off with Big Country. Big Country Elementary is proud to recognize fourth grader Henry Doss. Henry is a student who is constantly striving for greatness. His academics always come first and his grades are all on an A scale, 90% or higher. His class participation is profound. Henry is self-motivated and exceeds beyond basic expectations. He puts tremendous effort, works hard, and is always persistent. Henry is someone who takes initiative, which drives others to follow in the same path. His leadership skills are commendable, so his peers respect him. He is the definition of a true leader. Congratulations. Next up, we have Bob Hope Elementary. Bob Hope Elementary would like to recognize Renata Isais. Renata has been a student of Bob Hope since pre-K. She is extremely proactive and self-motivated. All of her past teachers have described her as respectful, helpful, and a pleasure to have in class. Renata has made consistent progress on iStation and TTM, usually receiving top honors for both programs. Due to her participation in the dual language program, Renata is truly a bilingual and biliteral student. Bob Hope is proud to have Renata represent our school. Congratulations. Congratulations, Renata. She's my name. McAuliffe Middle School would like to recognize Jairo Gonzalez. Jairo is a student who can always count on. He is a member of the Rocket football team, student ambassadors, and McCullough Mariachi. Yeah. Ido is an extremely respectful individual that doesn't shy from helping others, from helping pick up trash after lunches to making a new student feel welcomed on their first day at McCullough. <laughs> he strives to always do the right thing, even if it sometimes isn't popular to do so, and holds high expectations for others to do the same. Ido is an excellent example of what a McCullough rocket is, a respectful, responsible role model and rocket strong. Congratulations. <laughs> Next, we have Southwest Legacy High School, their first recognition. Mm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Southwest Legacy High School would like to recognize 11th grade Brisa Serrano. Brisa is a member of the Southwest Legacy Band and she represents Southwest Legacy well. Brisa became the face and voice of Southwest Legacy when it came to media coverage. If, if you all don't remember, she was on every media station when we were trying to uh, promote the, the school. To you. She's a very positive and outgoing young lady and motivates students to do well and to be involved. Congratulations.
for the month of 2017, 2018, and there will be others we recognize this year, but there will never be another first of this year. Mm -hmm. And so congratulations to you guys to be recognized so early in the year by your campus principal and your teachers and various staff, and so we're very proud of you and your effort. We'd like to ask if we have any parents and family members of our students of the month, because now you become families of the month. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank <laughs> Well, we do. It's it's Texas Education HR Day next month. So we wanted to kind of get a head start on that since it's early in the, in the month. So with more information, we have Dr. McAndrew. Yes. Good evening. Mr. Vasquez, members of the board, and Dr. Versa. Governor Greg Abbott from Texas has proclaimed October 10th, 2017, as Texas Education Human Resources Day. It's a day set aside to recognize and honor the important contributions made by the staffs who work in human resources. Human resources staff work hard every day to ensure that our schools are staffed with high quality employees and that those employees have a good work environment. In the Southwest Independent School District, the human resources are served by Administration and Human Resources, or AHR, and as a group, they believe so strongly in the mission of this district and the mission that we have to support the teaching and learning of students, wonderful students like these, that it's a great, it's a great pleasure to work with them every day. I'd like to introduce, we have two of them here today, they're probably going to kill me, but I'd like for them to stand. First of all, uh, Dr. Patty Escobedo. And our very own Executive Director of Human Resources, Mr. Jason Magura. Thank you very much. Vasquez, we have one more, sir. Um, underneath each board member's um, sitting area, you'll find one of these. And so we've got these shadow boxes. You'll see the invitation and the program that we had back on August the 10th for everyone in the community. Mm -hmm. We dedicated um, Southwest Legacy High School. And so we went ahead and took the invitation and the program for that night, and we set it up for each of our board members to have as a, as a keepsake for that night. But we also wanted to present one to Ms. Chavera. Um, to take back to her Aww. campus as well, too. So, Aww. big hand for That was my one more, sir. Thank you, Mr. Garcia. And, and so I also want to recognize someone else. I, I know Dr. McAndrew did a great job of recognizing her staff, but she is the leader of Administration Human Resource. So we would be remiss if we didn't take the opportunity to pass the same gratitude her way. Thank you for Thank your service you. and everything you do. That wasn't from Greg Abbott, it was from me.
Southwest High School Phase One construction update, and here to present we have Rafael Bedoya with uh, Flugrad. Good evening, everybody. Yes, sir. Good evening. I think I've been presenting here for almost uh, nine years, <laughs> and every time I come up here, I still get a little nervous. <laughs> and you guys are also friendly and gentle with me, so I, I've always appreciated that. We are presenting on the high school renovations phase one work, which is uh, primarily the, was the work at the CTE building renovations. Uh, the major items of work on the three areas are, are, are basically complete. Uh, we've been doing uh, uh, punch list walks after hours, after 3.30, when kids are moving out is when we've started to do our walks so that we don't interrupt the activities. Uh, at the main entry and at the reception, the only thing we got left there is uh, some hardware at the security vestibule that the uh, marksman should be completing here soon, but the work up there is pretty much complete. Uh, and the athletic showers, the, I believe the showers are already being used. Uh, the, so that, that, that's good news. Everything's flushing correctly and draining correctly, so we're, we're happy for that. At the CTE building, the second floor, which was mostly cosmetic work, uh, new ceilings, new fixtures, uh, new paint finishes, new flooring on the corridors, all that is complete. The only item that we have left there is the cosmetology lab. Uh, which the contractor, because of the delivery of certain materials, they kind of uh, are, are almost finishing there. We've asked them to finish uh, and do our punch list by the beginning of next week is when we're doing it, hopefully by Friday. Uh, so th and we've been in there already, taking a little look, and they do have a little touch-ups here and there. Uh, we still do need to do our, our uh, punch list, so, uh, but, but it's looking good. It'll be a nice uh, uh, change to what they were used to there. So it, it was a nice, uh, nice project for us there. So are they just doing classroom work right now? Yes, ma'am. Okay. In that Cosmo lab? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. The classroom is already available, and they, they've already been having classes yeah. there. Just the cosmetology lab is the one. They're basically connecting all the pedicure tables and the, all the other equipment that needs. Are we going to take a tour of that when it's done? You can't? Yes. Yeah. We can set it up. Oh, shit. It, get a pedicure. <laughs> get you a pedicure. That would be awesome. <laughs> Mr. Brahas. <laughs> He's good at those. The what? <laughs> you have to schedule pedicures oh, yeah. and uh, oh, yeah. manicures. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions you guys have on phase one? No. Uh, also wanted to give a quick update on phase two. Uh, we're meeting with uh, Fluger regularly now and their team uh, to expand on what phase two uh, will be uh, comprised of. So the renovation, the scope, and really trying to figure out a deadline uh, and what we'll be issuing either a CM at risk or a competitive seal proposal. So uh, we're vetting that process and we'll be ready to bring updates as they come along. 
Do we have a start date for that? I've forgotten. The, the, well, going back, the project's about a $9.5 million project, mm -hmm. uh, and we're looking to bring a, a CM at risk, most likely on board earlier, to help us in the design phase and also with uh, giving us an estimate of cost. And then we're looking to have, uh, take, the, and I don't want to jump ahead of Fluger, but around uh, March okay. to actually put it out and get, get something on the street to get, take in some bids and get pricing. Uh, and then start a summer to really jump into the summer and because and, we're gonna have to phase it that's why we want to kind of get a cm at risk on board because this is going to be a phase project okay. similar to what we had at mcauliffe okay. uh, where we're going to have to move students out of certain areas yeah. do some demolition con and build there and some construction okay. and renovation and then move those back in and and so there'll be some uh more i can't give you exact dates right now because we need to probably get a cm at risk on uh, and do the phasing part before we can kind of give you some hard deadlines. Okay. So that's uh, important to know, too. This project's going to touch two different school years. So correct. what we're trying to do is a project that will start at the end of one year, so that's ready to open up. Uh, correct. So we don't get to the beginning of the school year. So that's our, our timeline, that's our goal. That's right. the kind of project school. Mm -hmm. Correct. Bond, the last part of the bond funds. So it'll be our last part of the uh, the bond funds that we have available. Uh, that's from the 2012 bond. So we have five and a half million dollars available. Correct. Oh. Yeah. Uh, and that's where we are with that. So. That's all we got. That's all we got left. Yeah. I know. I know we We're going to make the money work. <laughs> Brandon said he only has so much magic. Yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to mention. Uh, Mostly that decimal. You know, maybe where the Dan Luttrell left. Yes. I just wanted to mention what a great asset he was to our district, and mm -hmm. he was always so enthusiastic mm -hmm. and so helpful. We wish him luck yeah. uh, in his future endeavors. I just wanted to mention that to you. Well, we appreciate that. He, he, he brought a lot to the office, so it, it was sad to see him go, but uh, we wish him the best to him and his family, and we'll probably run into him in the future, too. So. Yeah. You'll be busy. <laughs> yeah. We're going to be duking it out with him, maybe. <laughs> uh, and then just wanted to also give a quick update on uh, Southwest Legacy High School. Uh, right now we're working through all of the uh, punch list items and work orders as they come in. Uh, we've also met with several teachers on priority art items. Really things that we want to tackle first are anything that's uh, affecting their instructional time. Uh, would it, there be projectors, whether it be equipment, that's really what we are prioritizing as our number one or nine one ones on uh, work, uh, work orders and calls. Uh, the only thing that's pending to walk is the final uh, fire marshal uh, inspection for the press box. So, Can you tell me the culinary is working? I heard that it, we had a lot of issues and they weren't actually able to use the kitchen yet. They were able to use the kitchen. They were just items that we needed to resolve. Uh, yeah. The girdle was not working at the time, but stove uh, equipment. There was one freezer that was condensating. Uh, I know that's been looked at, uh, but dishwasher, all of the small appliances that the project provided. Uh, so they're working. in there. They're yes. using it right And now we have pretty much in turn... Uh, to that is we had asked doors to give us hard deadlines on when those items are going to be fixed so we don't prolong it and I right. got responses we've been getting updates pretty much every other day but today I got very hard deadlines on when that equipment will be fixed and uh, resolved and that would include uh, culinary arts fine arts uh, areas and all of the other areas that are really pending uh, I know one of the items has been air conditioning systems and the contractor uh, installed new software on all 150 RTUs. So that was done all uh, as of last Friday. Well, so what we've been facing is, you know, we the building has been complete and they started putting equipment in, but we haven't had people in there to use it. Yeah. So now as they're coming in, we're finding, you know, maybe lighting issues, we're finding HVAC issues, we're finding equipment issues. So we're having to really work through those. And uh, it's not an excuse, but we're asking George for some hard deadlines on getting that stuff right. completed. So it's, uh, a, it's, a in, it's interesting that uh, the equipment that we ordered is so advanced yes. that really none of our people know how to work it, <laughs> which is okay. Yeah. We just, it just takes the time 
right. get in there and learn. How. Correct. Yeah. Uh, oh. hmm. We've also uh, addressed it with uh, Principal Chavera, and uh, we're making it a point to meet with department heads. Uh, we did walk through after walk through after walk through, but we didn't check every single plug out there. Mm. Yeah. So we're meeting with department heads, and uh, they'll be able to tell us if a sink is leaking, if yeah. an outlet is not working, if their projector's not working. So we'll, we'll be doing that uh, regularly until we work out the bugs. Would you say there's an unusual amount of issues? No. Or is this it's just standard? What's unusual is having the building sit for six months and then occupying it. And the size of it? Yeah. And I mean, it's such a big building. Correct. Yeah. I mean, that, that's exactly the thing to note is that we're typically used to trying to get the building right on time before we move in, and a lot of things come up, but they're being addressed. In yeah. this case, and yeah. I was mentioning to Darren earlier today, is some areas we finished more than eight months ago, yeah. <laughs> but nobody was using. So now that everybody's moving in, some things are popping up that didn't appear because nobody was using the spaces or the equipment or what have you. But, but, but we've we made it a point to George to tell him that, I mean, yeah, I mean, we, you buy a new house, you want everything, and you want your house and everything working. So we've asked for some deadlines uh, to work with us. We've been pretty, we've worked with them. So now we're to a point where we want some, some things done. Resolve. Some resolve. Uh, and that's. Uh, Joris. Joris is good with uh, warranty work. So Correct. The on the paint booth, right now we're going to have a meeting with the city on, uh, on Friday. On Friday, with to go with the fire suppression uh, aspect of it. That is uh, one of the things that's pending but shouldn't be an issue. After that, we're waiting on Joris to finalize the installation. What we're hearing from them is as soon as we get a response back from the city, uh, their sub is going to uh, do the permit application for fire suppression and then get it done. I still haven't gotten, say, it's going to be a week or two weeks from now, but uh, we'll know for sure on Friday what that will be after Friday's. Yeah, that was one of the pending ones that we don't have a hard deadline on. So just wanted to give a boarded update on that so that you guys know uh, if you hear something out there and so you're aware of what's kind of going on. All right. Thank you. That's Thank it, sir. Thank you all. Well, the tax rate, we're, we're kind of where we were last month. We're down like 0.14%, which is less than real. We're right there. We're, we're not doing too bad. But we are down 0.14%. Thank you. <laughs> I, I get, yeah, I did. I got my cupcakes from Sarah. Would you say that we were impacted by the charter school that opened across from Indian Creek? Are the numbers looking the same, or are they down? You know, I would say that we, we had some impact. Uh, you know, it's a new building in the neighborhood. You can actually see it from the park lot in Indian Creek uh, Elementary. So I can see when we kind of gathered the data from our elementary that um, it was a choice for, for our parents and their families and children made that choice. Uh, we can also in having conversations with uh, Ms. Martinez uh, uh, Resnick, that we also see some flight back uh, into mm -hmm. school. And, um, you know, we have a plan right now to have conversations with our families who made that choice to understand that uh, what's why they would make that choice versus their neighborhood school. But I fully uh, think that we we have really great programs to offer our families, uh, but we also need to engage in conversations, dialogue. Uh, about other opportunities for us to create choice within mm -hmm. our system, external to our system, uh, that would show them that we're, we are a viable uh, choice that they can make as well. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at that. Uh, I would say the opening of uh, the school down the road on Pearsall Road uh, did have minimal impact. Okay. We've had a lot of impact. Okay. Are they full at school? Do you know anything about their I enrollment? No. Uh, I know that uh, Mr. Garcia is kind of looking into that and kind of leading the gallery. And I think we'll have a presentation of the drawback. Uh, 
right to gather the data. Uh, we just have done some you know, kind of preliminary scanning, asking our principal, telling mm -hmm. uh, request for records that we received. So we're definitely gathering things to bring to the board. Uh, mm -hmm. and instead of guessing, we wanted to make sure we're exactly the top of Dr. Verstow, can you find out? I had a parent tell me that his child had been accepted early into kindergarten, that they tested her and they allowed her in. Can they do that? I mean, they, they don't have to. I mean, we don't do that. If their birthday isn't on a certain day, they can't start kindergarten. And yet they are taking, according to him, they're taking a four-year-old into kindergarten. There are there are Is ways that for that to happen depending on their charter and what, that, what, what actually that says in law. Uh, but there is a way to actually move beyond uh, the normal procedures. Like we could have used that in, in a district of innovation plan if we wanted. Right. Uh, we just chose not to. So the answer is yes. They probably do have the option to do that in their system. Can we can we put some thought into that if we're trying to increase our enrollment? And you have children that can test into kindergarten. Yeah. Just a thought. We'll definitely look into it and bring you some information. When we find out. Mm -hmm. Sure. Good evening. Right. District staff has once again scheduled our online auction to begin November 3rd and conclude November 13th. Lemons auctioneers will be conducting the auction. They've been with us for a few years now. The items that we're looking to dispose of include old furniture such as student desk and office furniture, older technology items, uh, older kitchen equipment, and a few transportation items as well. We don't have a lot that we're gonna be auctioning, but we wanna continue to, that process every year. Uh, there is an attached schedule of the different events from when they're gonna come and tag and, and take the digital photography of that. Uh, our board policy, CI Local, allows superintendent or their designee to declare district materials, equipment and supplies to be unnecessary and to dispose of unnecessary materials, equipment and supplies for fair market value. So we do this once, uh, once a year. So. So thank you for the opportunity to share out uh, some of our learning and the objective tonight is to just give a broad overview of what we're learning because we're very much still in the discovery phase of the project and with the understanding that we're, this is year one, month three of a five-year project, okay? So um, this is kind of, um, kind of a visual of the work that we have before us and uh, as you know, we are looking at the baseline, uh, which would be our foundation on that district culture piece. And so the idea here is to kind of, to build capacity and at the end result of it, we, we have excellent student outcomes, right? And so I'm not gonna go through this, this whole visual, uh, but we are looking at building a talent pipeline. 
and talent pipeline for leadership. And that leadership uh, doesn't always exist in campus leadership, but may exist at the teacher, teacher level, campus level, central office level, et cetera. And so this is just a really good visual. Uh, and so kind of where we are right now is in a discovery phase where they are, they are in the district twice a week. They're doing one-on-one -on -one interviews with all district executive directors and directors. And then the next phase of their focus group work will be with our principals, our APs, and teachers that actually hold capacity on campuses that are department chairs, teacher leaders, and things like that. So they're, they're putting a lot of time and energy into getting our baseline so that we can essentially in the next couple of months define actually what leadership at Southwest ISD is gonna mean and how we're gonna spin our work off of that definition. And so uh, I'll just take you through some of the learning. And so we are learning about district culture, the aligned leadership definition, organizational infrastructure, the identification part of identifying future leaders and then developing and placing them. And I'm going to take you back to this slide because to the, where you look at the enabler, that's kind of what we're learning. You'll see all the definition in the middle. I won't cover those tonight, but you have those for, for your viewing. But what you will see is what we're seeing when we're going places. So when we went to Singapore, we had very strategic things that we had to outline that we wanted to learn from their system. When, this past weekend, we were actually in San Antonio. We actually were visiting a corporate structure that has a very aligned talent management, talent development system, uh, HEB. I think we all left there wanting to be employees of HEB. It's that good. Uh, and then in October, we'll be traveling to Ontario, Canada to look at another school system that is really good at developing leadership in, in their system. And so um, one of the things, the big takeaways, I think, uh, from our group that we kind of came up with on Sunday in our culminating event was uh, basically two things is they're very intentional mm -hmm. and they're very intentional. Mm -hmm. So there is no gray area in how they define, how they develop and how they promote. And, and it's really a truly incredible system, not only at HEB, but what they do at Singapore mm -hmm. and what they do. I'm, I'm assuming we're going to see the same thing when we go to Canada. Mm -hmm. And so we're excited about the work. Uh, it is uh, quite a bit of time away. Uh, and the project will be that the district team, which is a Dr. Verstaff, obviously myself, Jennifer Ellison, the executive director for secondary, Dalila, executive director for elementary, Patty Escobedo is from our admin HR side, and then we have uh, Velia Tarasis is on our district team. We do have an internal team as well, uh, because we could not have everybody on that team for the travel components, uh, but our internal team is very much inclusive of the people in budget and finance and HR. Uh, we do have principals on the internal team, uh, Krista, Nail, and Veronica Quinkle wilson We have uh, some of our directors, Richard, Peter Wagner, uh, and Will, Will Baker. I was going to say Will Smith, sorry. <laughs> and so um, they are actually going to be, as we're learning, then, then our work after around January really begins bringing that work back to that group so to begin their understanding and their development of that. In year two, we will be identifying a team of principals that will now become part of the training. And so we don't know much more about that other than I think there's been one initial conversation with the superintendents, uh, but the district sizes are very different. We're the smallest. We're about half the size of the next largest one to us. And so you definitely see capacity and uh, uh, infrastructure differences in the, in the systems uh, that we're, we're connecting with, and we're learning lots from other systems, and so that's a, we're in a really good place. Uh, I feel very confident that we're going to be able to take a lot of things away and truly develop something uh, for the next 15 to 20 to 25 years at Southwest ISD. That will be next to none one of the best things we've ever done. So, any questions? Mm -hmm. Did they share with y'all at all um, what their interest in Southwest because like you said we're one of the well we are the smallest district involved did they sit uh, when they did the selection process what made them say we want to work with them you know and it's a great question and, and it's a question I think uh, we've asked and you know I, I think they see some exceptional student outcomes coming from this side of San Antonio uh, that you, you honestly that you normally don't expect to see uh, but more so than that I think that, that there is a open mind uh, concept, a district that we're learned before we're anything else. Uh, I, mean, 
I think they see that within uh, our schools, uh, within our governance structure, uh, within our administrative structure. Uh, if you have an open mind and you're willing to be a learner and you're willing to embrace that, uh, just like what we heard at Eastern Gate, that was so uh, compounding to listen to someone say, you know, the day of average is over, so having an average grocery store for average customers doesn't really exist. And so you have to, how do you apply that to school systems? You know, having an average school Everything she, what? She found, along with her saying everything about it, she didn't. Uh, <laughs> she told me that it's the village. Mm -hmm. So as we get further and further into the program, what I'd really like to see is that the public get more of an understanding of what, because it's really something to be very, uh, you're not supposed to be prideful because you know what the Bible says about pride. But it's something to be very, uh, that the public needs to know that good things are going on. Because all they hear is the bad, right? right? So in my opinion, for all of those school districts to be on the table to receive the honor of participating, for Southwest to be selected is huge. Mm -hmm. But nobody really knows that outside of the school that we've been honored that way. And it's just one of those things that you want those people that are choosing charter schools to know mm -hmm. that we're doing a better job of including every single child in our school district instead of picking and choosing the children we take. So and I firmly believe, Ida, and uh, other board members, that is the plan uh, in the next year or two is to really shout that out. Um, but right now, because we're kind of in our infancy right. and still learning about I what... I what to be in the conversation that parents need to know. This is We're going above and beyond. We're really going above and beyond what the state requires of us because yes. y'all are putting in, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, so much of your personal lives into this thing. Yeah. I just think it's a great, it's a great honor. It is, and, and there are two key things I, I do want to share. Uh, in that, uh, the they are investing uh, in us like, like I've never seen anything like it in my life. 
uh, in, in education across America, but we are getting some of the best training from some of the best professors in the business. Uh, the first training that we went through, Dr. Versif mentioned, was the personal mastery piece, and that was about you. You know, it was really about you, and from Hitendra Wadawa, who is the professor at University of Columbia, and that's kind of his specialty. And this past weekend, we were with Ram Sharan, who is the Harvard professor, who really works with like the global market leaders on hiring of Google and, and those types of places. And so, uh, they're not. Uh, this is no small thing. Uh, it is some of the most intriguing. Um, pieces to be part of and the network of other districts across Texas because some of them are obviously their infrastructure support, supports um, a lot of different things but nothing more than what we're doing is what we're finding out they're just a little further ahead and have maybe some different resources to attach to it and so our learning is extended um, with who we're partnered with and so um, that's going to be really valuable so that as we learn about other systems across the world, we're also learning about other systems across Texas. And that, that for me, has been really insightful. And so um, we're really excited about it. I think that the team that went this past weekend was kind of like, and we have the new thing called the Holdsworth Day, I believe we can officially say that. It starts at 6.30 in the morning and ends at about 10. And so, <laughs> so we were excited to see our families at 7 o'clock on Sunday. So it was great. So. But it's been wonderful. So, any other questions? Dr. Versif, I have kind of an odd question, I think. Uh, and that is, you say that average is not, a, I'm not sure what you said, it's not acceptable, or you say, are you saying that people are not average? Well, I don't think, I shouldn't exist, really. Uh, there's so much information, and a student today is different from a student 10 years ago, 20 years ago. Uh, with their access to, you know, before you used to get out the Britannica encyclopedia and look at things, and now you hit a couple of buttons and that information is, is there in front of you. And so the students that we educate today, the jobs are going to fill, most of them don't even exist. Uh, yeah, but I think that that's different than talking about average. And I've been concerned for some time that we've created an environment where We've said average isn't good enough. Well, in fact, numerically, there is an average. There's no way to get around the fact that most of us are average. Uh, if we do, then we are really uh, misleading students. And what I've always been fearful of is the fact that that those of those of us who are average are, are going to feel like we're failing if we're not making A's. Yeah. Now, I don't know how everybody can make an A. If we have everybody making an A, I think we're making a big mistake. Uh, I, I don't think that's where you're going, but that's where your statement led me to. Uh, I'm not talking about methods. I'm talking about reality in life. Kids going to our schools. There are some that are very happy, and the best they can do is to be average. I'm one of them. Uh, so it's, it's just a philosophical uh, argument I'd like you to think about. That's all. Absolutely. So I, I think of you a lot of things. I don't think of you as average people. Yeah. yeah. I do. I, 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 I think of average. You're average. I'm a genius. When I was in high school. Aye, aye, aye. When I was in high school. Maybe the, the better, better word should be a, a traditional approach. So, you know, I, I think we... We can't educate I the kids today as we did years ago. I understand. I'm, I'm just saying it's okay to be that well. Straight to the court. It's okay to, to go through school and, and have not made the honor roll every time. Oh, absolutely. Uh, because those people are going to be successful and happy in their life if they're given the opportunity. And uh, the whole thing is not to make everybody an A.B. I know that's not what you're talking about. Short to I the point. And I wonder if we sometimes might think of it as more that everyone can have something that they excel at. Like we might be an average human being, but maybe there's one thing that I'm really, really good at. And now with kids having access to so much information, they're better able to do that even on their own. They don't even sometimes need us to help them find that niche, yeah, right? That, that statement actually came from one of the one of the HEB uh, members in leadership, 
And I think if you were to have been there to see and hear um, in the Department of Cheese, uh, you know, uh, the way they de-average that is they make that person the best leader in the cheese business that you can find. You and, and when you talk to that person, that person is so excited to be the cheese person mm -hmm. and the expert there. Yeah. And that's the kind of culture that's been created at, at that type of business. So well, I didn't visit that one, but I visited the actually Marbach Road um, store. So mm -hmm. we saw some of our kids and, you know, uh, students without degrees are, are, are sharing in leadership and it's very exciting for them and so they really put a lot of emphasis on on developing people they hire that when they hire they hire people that can fill three or four positions down the road you know and so it's just a different way of thinking I, and I think maybe the average thing was about really the system not being average not necessarily the yeah. customer that we're serving it's about how do we de-average the system so that we serve our kids <coughs> to the best of our ability so. Yes, sir. Um, Gulf States Toyota. They have been a, a a great partner and a friend of Southwest ISD. And uh, Gulf States Toyota is kind of a distribution center for parts and distribution center for uh, vehicles in the Houston area. They kind of uh, have the kind of the southern belt distribution areas. Uh, and they were, they, they have faced some issues with the, the, the previous hurricane and flooding. Uh, and so they reached out, reach out to us and they have a, um, a request. They were looking for an area where they could come in and they really needed a, an area to do some training with some uh, their highly skilled technicians. And currently we have about, we have two areas at the Southwest Career and Te Technology Building that are unoccupied. Uh, that have bay doors where they can bring in vehicles. And so uh, they reached out to us because they're just looking for a facility so they can temporarily keep their training going. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I just wanted to share with the board and, and, and kind of get your, seek your kind of approval now, not to go out and keep the conversation. We'd like to put a get together an MOU to allow them to use those, those facilities, those two rooms temporarily until they get back up on their feet in Houston. Uh, and so they can kind of keep their training going. And it may op offer some opportunities for our kids to uh, maybe get some training as well and see this, the technical side of Toyota. Uh, and so just wanted to give you an update on that. And we're reaching out to them and trying to go through the planning phase. Uh, we want to do an MOU because, you know, we want to make sure that our, our school is secured, our kids are safe. So we're going to put in the steps to make sure that happens. And so there's some background checks and things that need to take place, uh, rules and regulations that they need to follow just in case they break those where we, where we protect the district. But I wanted to share that with you because they have been a good friend of ours. Yeah. Uh, yeah, insurance uh, mm -hmm. risks. And Correct. Stuff. Yes, sir. Is that all day, every day, for yeah, how long? They would be, it would, they would run a classroom from like 8 to 3.30. It would be uh, pr some, basically they would have teachers that would come in uh, and have seven to eight students come in and they would go through working on cars, different scenarios, whatever they do, but it's the highly skilled stuff, mostly uh, computer uh, operations of all their ca their cars and those, the highly skilled type things. And so uh, it would be like from 8 to about 3.30 every day, uh, but it would be temporary and, it, and we'd have to work out those details on how long that would be. But right now we do have the facilities available. We just wanted to run it by the board before we get further into those phases. What facility were you thinking? It's the back part of the CTE building. Uh, it used to be one section used to be the uh, the welding shop, and the one uh, right to the right of that one. I can't remember what was in there. Uh, yeah, I don't correct in that area. So we have those two unoccupied at this point. Now next year we will be filling those up, but right now we have those available. So. Yes. Yeah. Correct. But they're in Houston. Sir? They're in Houston. They're in Houston. They have about four foot of water in the facility Aww. there. So, yeah. uh, they were actually looking for a reason to relocate and kind of set up shop in San Antonio. So they're hoping to use this for launching pad and more permanent. Uh, you know, they train all the Toyota kind of people, mechanics and technicians. And so we want to hire Toyota. It is. It's had to go from San Antonio to Houston and then back to San Antonio mm -hmm. Correct. before you can buy it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it would be a great deal if you could move that facility. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll have to do something. Uh, to make sure 
They're in their area, and we have classrooms on both sides. We look in how these two bays that fit together. Uh, but uh, we look at it if you want. Correct. Uh, we're going to have them bring their own, similar to if you were with an outside restroom facility that's air conditioned and mm -hmm. they're going to pay for that fencing we're going to make sure that they, they will take care of everything that the district needs and fit the bill and, and uh, just to kind of help them out Yes, sir. Uh, currently, we're in a little bit of a pickle with our bus driver situation. We are running through a, sh a shortage. Uh, and so part of advertising, getting out there, we're trying to do and recruit and do promotion. We want to really uh, find another way to attract more bus drivers. And so we're asking the board to approve a $250 finder's fee. Uh, if we have an employee finds us a bus driver and we and they actually meet the criteria and we hire them and they start working for us we would like to pay that employee 250 dollars uh because they you know our biggest promoters are our own people mm -hmm. uh and so if they find me a bus driver i'd like to or find us a bus driver i'd like for us to help and, and it would go as long as till we need it if we fill up all our bus driver slots uh then we wouldn't need it anymore but just something we need to do something to kind of help with our shortage right now because it's putting a big burden not only in the campuses but also on the transportation department. How are we currently, currently, we're addressing it with uh, employees and shops that need to be working on vehicles and answering phones. They're actually driving buses, uh, working on with the routes that uh, doubling up routes, doing extra routes, uh, paying overtime. So right now, the the shortage is uh, it just what happens is we're able to accommodate until we have six or seven bus drivers call in sick, and then it really puts us in a bind. And so. Uh, we have some in queue right now to hire, but we need about six to seven more at this point. And so it fluctuates. Last year we were okay. Year before we struggled. This year we're struggling again. So we're, we're just trying to find ways to attract <coughs> spe specifically that position, the bus driver position. The officer certificate res resolution is similar to the same document that the board has been signing after pretty much every election for the last forever uh, that we do with Wells Fargo. All this really is is a board signature uh, resolution. You right there, <laughs> <laughs> you're just you're average anyway. <laughs> I love him. <laughs> you can't take him nowhere. <laughs> no, he, he took that off. <laughs> what were we talking about? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so switch into the bank depository. We switched to uh, banks this past year. With We went from Wells Fargo to BBVA. Uh, we had the old bank signatures page that we used to sign. Uh, we, we're dealing with the new bank. They needed an upgraded form. This is their form. And so this all it is is it takes the place of the old board signature form. So we're just redoing the signature page for BBVA. I, I, every, every, every week they call us for something else. I know, ma'am. It's pretty frustrating. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. The, it's been quite the transition, changing banks, but uh, this is another document they need uh, to make that happen. Second. I don't know. Right. I don't know if he knows that. I think we're delaying that one until we come back. Yeah. Stay here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. 
Is that later? Later. Yeah. Later. Later. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Poor Rob. Yes, sir. This morning uh, we did a tandem press conference uh, with Palo Alto College and SA Works uh, at Palo Alto College. Uh, a press release for our CAS uh, school, that's the magnet school within the school, Southwest Legacy High School. The idea uh, was to make sure that we get that information out there in, into the public arena. Uh, there is also a CAS 3 school that we announced uh, pretty soon into the future, which is going to be a CAS Med. Ours is a CAS STEM school. It starts in 2018, as we've talked about before, with 200. We actually moved the number from 150 to 200, and we'll get into this in the brown bag. Uh, incoming or rising freshmen, and they will go 200 into the program for the next four years. By 2022, we'll have 800 students, uh, approximately mm -hmm. 800 students, into the uh, CAS STEM program. It has a name now. We don't refer to it as CAS II anymore. It is CAS STEM. We have a logo for it. Uh, we're bringing all that information to, to our trustees. And still, we still have the four kind of pathways uh, that students go into, the advanced manufacturing pathway, engineering pathway, global logistics pathway of power and energy. Uh, some of them are career workforce with industry certification. Uh, some of it is college track work. Uh, students would go to Southwest Legacy High School for the ninth and 10th grade year and then transition to Palo Alto College uh, in a building to be determined in the future if we're actually gonna build it part of their bond that just passed here recently. And so by the time our students go, the building should be up. They'll receive the students and we'll be working this program in tandem. Mm -hmm. uh, also, uh, our other partner, we have industry partners, but our other partner is Texas A&M University, where our students, those who want to stay in the university track, would have the opportunity to go to that university as well. So students can get up to 42 college credits. Uh, they can get industry certification. Uh, they'll have access to, we, we think, some very intensive internship, job shadow, uh, potential paid internship opportunities. Uh, our industry partners, uh, Hope Cat and Toyota and HEB, and, and there's a number of other ones who are part of building the program. So it's really an exciting time. Mm -hmm. It's going to be uh, very different. Then there's going to be some issues we need to work out, like how do we all live together under one roof uh, for those first two years, and, and then they, they go to follow up. So the, um, it's that type of innovative thing that we're really uh, excited to bring to Southwest. And so. Of the 800 students by 2022, 400 of them will be Southwest ISD students. The other 400 will be new to Southwest ISD. They'll be Southwest ISD, but they'll be new students that we kind of remove our, our, our borders right. and, and they become students. So it's a, we increase our ADA, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it will create opportunity for students. So I just want to make sure. Uh, if you have a chance, I see Channel 12 was there, uh, Channel 5, yeah. Press um, News. Um, what do you Because you're on. The McDonough Tribune. I saw them in the back. <laughs> <laughs> How about the one army reporter? Mr. Rob Robinson, who's going to present. How are y'all? Uh, we're asking that the board approve the um, contract for the Autism Treatment Center for services from them. Um, it's a art committee decision that, that uh, brought it about, and it's $170,000 a year. Second. Thank you. Thank you, Rob.
Go feed them. I move we. I move we approve the superintendent's recommendation on personnel. I second. Do we have a motion and a second? All those favor, please say aye. Aye. Yes, sir. Uh, we'd like to invite our, our trustees this Thursday night at Titan Stadium, uh, Southwest Legacy High School. We'll be playing Eagle Pass Win. Uh, they're going to have Legacy Youth Night. Uh, beautiful stadium uh, if you haven't had a chance to get out there um, really great opportunity the band plays at halftime it's got the feel of a varsity game it's really kind of fun uh, and a lot of people show up there what time is it at? it's at 7 p.m. <coughs> is when the uh, JV will play and then the very next night if you feel like driving uh, some lonely highway to Del Rio uh, we'll be taking on Del Rio our football team at 7 30 p.m. On Friday night, the 22nd. That's so part of district play, right? Is there anything else? Anybody have anything else? Other announcements? <laughs> you know, whoever didn't go to the game last Friday at, <clears throat> against Holmes, y'all missed a great football game because it was awesome. <laughs> it was a good game. It was good. Win? Yeah, we won 30 to 16, but it was a great game. No, was was good. a good game last Friday? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you was with HEB, you wouldn't know. <laughs> Kids are there. there you go.